computer science can be like you have these pins on one side and pins on another side and you can have like these things between them that would only turn on or off if its input if its inputs have a certain state and then once you're done you can make you can do this give it a name and then it should show up over here you should have a new circuit and this is one of the logic gates that were used to create it so to add so you have the you start with just the and gate and the not gate <laughs> the AND gate works like this. It only turns on if both of the inputs are on. And I made what's called a truth table over here. The AND gate, if you plug in all these inputs, then it will show a either 0 or 1 with on and off. No, it's not. And then there's also the not gate. How the not gate works is if the input is on, the output is off, and if that input is off, the output is on. So a truth table for that looks like this. What I want to try to make is an OR gate. So if the first input or the next input is on, then the output is on. So there's this thing. So we need to have two input pins for this. But there's this thing where, like, <laughs> with the AND gate, the two inputs, the output is off if the first input or the second input is off. So, what I want to do is take that OR and turn it into if the first input is on or the second input is on, then the output is on. Well, first, but there's this OR property, but then the output will be off. So first things first, you have to bring that through NOT gate. This NOT gate will make it so that if either of the inputs are off, the output is on. But this is still, that this still won't work because this is if either of the outputs are off. Uh, what I want to do is have them be on instead. So if you have two NOT gates over here and here, then that means that the output, the output, if the output is off, then it will go to the amp to get. It will go to this part of the thing. It will go to this part, and then the output will be off. Um, the output will be on because. The, so, if you turn either of the inputs on, then one of the inputs to the AND gate is off, which means the output is off which means this output is on. And, the, and if you think about it that another way, the only way for the output to be on is if the input is if this is off. The only way for this to be off is if either of these are off. The only way for either of these to be off is if either of these are on. And this is the OR gate. So, now what you do is uh, 
back in Sublime, there's this, there's these things, transistor A, transistor B. These are captured transistors, they only turn on if a certain condition is met. So, like, if the first input is on and the second input is off, or the first input is off, the second input is on. Yeah, I mean, 
So where was I? All oh, right, transistors A and B. So with transistor A, if you look back at the truth table, it only turns on if the first input is on and the second input is not on. Oh no. I accidentally clicked on a different app. So the first input is on and the second input is not on. But you, we could do like this. So that means that like if it's a truth table, zero zero, off, zero one, on, one zero, off. Wait no, zero zero. Uh wait, what was the truth table again? One zero, one zero is on, and then everything else is off. And yeah, this is straight to straight. What about transistor B? It's the exact same thing except the other way around. So. To do that, I'll just put a not gate on the other input, and that will just swap the inputs. And it works. And this is the idea behind. This is the idea behind transistor B. I don't know if anyone's listening, but I don't know if that's going to deter me. <laughs> Wait, it is? Okay, good. Okay. So, um, when you're adding two numbers in binary, how binary works is like each input is based off of like you can think about what like, this number as starting with this and then complete and then repeatedly multiplying by two and adding one. So. Wait, if it's a 1. So this is a 1, and then, wait, no, this is a 0. So it's 0, so 0, this is a 1, so 0 times 2 plus 1 is 1. This is a 0, so 1 times 2 is 2. This is a 1, so 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. Or you could think of it as adding powers of 2. So this is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the 3. So 2 to the 0 is 1, so 1. And then 2 to the 2 who is... Wait, no, 2 to the 1 is 2, but this is... But this is multiplied by 0. 2 to the 3... Wait, no, 2 to the 2 is 4, so 1 plus 4 is 5. And this is off, so I won't even bother to compute it. So... <laughs> when you have that value, when you're adding 1, if it's a 0, turn it into a 1. And if it's a 1, turn it into a 0 and apply the same process to the next number. So zero, turn it into one. One, turn it into a zero and apply the same process to the next number. Turn it into a zero, apply the same.
same process for the next number. Turn it to a zero, apply the same process to the next number. And then you hit a zero, which means you turn it to one. So now, with an XOR gate, I don't show when you're adding two numbers and arranging it like this, so like these two numbers are, let's say you're just adding these two values. What you want the output to be is, well, 0 plus 0 is um, 0, so 0. Zero plus one is one, so one. One plus zero is one, so it's still one. One plus one is two, and let's see, one, two, two. So two is one zero, so like this. So, this input only turns on when both of the inputs were on. So, we can just have an AND gate for that. But for the other input, it only, it's actually an XOR gate, which I haven't talked about, but it's like, but the input, this input is only on if there's just one input that's on. Because if there's zero inputs on, both inputs are off. And if there's two inputs that are on, then this input is on. So it's an XOR gate. And the truth table for an XOR gate looks like this. So, um, if this is the, if this is the case, or if this is the case, then you want to show a one. And we can test for that. So, in making an XOR gate, you can test for that like this. You get transistor A to check if the first input is on and the second input is not on. And then you get transistor B to check if the first input is not on and the second input is on. And then you OR the results. And it works. If zero inputs are on, then none of the transistors are on. If the first input is on, then the second input, then this is on, which means that the output is on. If this is on, then this is on, and the output is on. But both are on, then it's impossible for just one input to be on if both of them are, so it's off. And that's the XOR game. Now, you can make that adder for the last digit. You'll just take an AND gate. And an XOR gate. And then you can hook that up into the sub, which you output, and the carry, which you carry over to the next bit. This can deal with the number, except you might be wondering why it's called half, because there might be a carry bit from another thing, another um, another a 
another what if you were adding the two digits and then there's the carrion from the next thing well you can add <laughs> these two with the half adder but then with this one you can you can have an XOR gate because like with the submit and the carry out and then I'll put that as the sub. Well the carry is um the carry would have to be if this is on or if this is on and either of these are on, which can be the, the the um, if this input is on and either of these are on, then that can be used as a board game. But we could instead have we could instead have have the XOR input because if all three of these are on, then this XOR gate input will be off, but still, this will be on. Wait, no, but still, both of these would be on, and it would still work. And actually, you're having an XOR gate and an AND gate. You can replace this with another half adder between the submit and the carry out. And then I'll put the result. And then the carry can go into an OR gate with this, and you would have the number. Oops. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. one. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is, this is 2. And then if just the carry is on, then the output is on, and then this is on, this is on, and then with this, it shows that number. Let's think about this. One, two, three. That number was three. And this is the full adder with the carry in A and B, and then the sum and the carry out. I won't go through making an adder, but basically, wait, this might seem intimidating to you, whoever you are. I don't know who the target audience is, but the, the carry-in can go into the carry-in input of this one, which goes into, and then the carry-out goes into the next one, and then this one goes into this one. It might seem odd that there's a carry-in, you could just use a half adder, but actually, if you think about it, it makes sense. Um, I don't if you're, for example, stringing two adders together, then like the carry out it can go into the carry in of the next one, and then that would work as an 8 bit adder. So, what about subtraction? I don't know how to make a new When you're taking negative x, then well, as you remember, 
In the adder, this is the carry out output, then there's a four bit output and a four bit input. So basically, this carry out it doesn't actually matter. Plus, with a subtractor, the only way for it to give a carry out is if it's more than a four bit number, which is impossible because the maximum you can do is take 15 minus zero, and then that would just be 15. So in this case, a carry out bit wouldn't matter. I have to go and do something else. Okay, and that. So, now what you can do is, um, negative x equals two to the power of how many digits, which I'm just going to call n. And this will just show up as zero in the subtractor. So I can subtract off x. That equals, well, two <laughs> to the power of N. Minus one. Minus X. <laughs> plus one. Two to the N equals. One equals one, 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 dot, 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 n times minus 
X. And it's actually really easy to do this because Well, you can just subtract off the values. You can't have a, the only way for you to get a negative number is if you have zero minus a one. It's possible for x to have some ones in it, but it's impossible for this to have any zeros because it's all ones and repeated times. And one minus zero is one. Zero minus one. We know one minus zero is one. Zero, one minus zero. One minus one is zero. So that's just a not there. You take all of the digits of the. Uh, all, the, all of the digits of x and then do the inverse of them. So how this would work is you take x and I'm just looking at I'll just add a hashtag to to indicate that your oh I forgot to add one. So plus one. Then the y is inverse of x plus. What? So now you have X minus Y, and that equals X plus to to the n minus y. And that equals X plus the bitwise inverse of Y plus one. And we can actually implement this. I'll have an adder and I'll have my two numbers, x and y. I'll get up to not gauge because I'm taking the bitwise inverse of y. Okay, so far no one has any questions. So I'll take the bitwise inverse of y. And then the output will go into the carrier. And then 
You can out the result. So this works. Five minus three, for example, is two. But there's no indication of negative numbers. So like three minus five won't show two, it will show the carryout minus two. I think I can do this without supply. How would you, it, so I can't connect this straight to the output, but I should be able to make the output go into, like, what about the carryout? If the result is negative, then subtracting from the carryout has to not have the carryout anymore. So if it's off, then the output is on. Wait, then the output is negative. And if it's on, then the output is off. So now what we can do is take the output and if we invert that then it will give a 1 if the output is negative and a 0 if the output is positive. So now what I'm looking for is a logic where if the invert signal is on then it will invert the bit. So how would you do this? If the output is on I'll also put to supply to see if we can find a comparison. So if the input signal is off and the output and the input is off, then the output is off. So it can be or transistor A, transistor B, or X. It can be and, not up. So it can be and or transistor A, transistor B, or X. If the invert is off and the output is on, then the output is on. So it can only be OR gate, transistor B, or XOR. If the, if the input is on and the output is off, then it's a 1. So only the OR gate and the XOR gate match that. If the input is on and the output is on, then the output. If the input, if the invert signal is on and the data signal is on, then it's inverting on an on state, giving an off state. So XOR it is. So what you can do is take XORs, four of them. Also, you need a negative sign for this. So, you can plug in each of the inputs to some of these XOR gates. Also, I'm not by the way. And then add one, which can be the same only if the output is on. So if you have, a, so you can just take an adder with your values and then add one. So then you can output the result. And 
this should work. As you've seen, 5 minus 3, the carryout is on, so it won't ask to invert anything. But in the other case of 3 minus 5, it does say 2, but it says negative 2. So this works as a subtractor. Oh, wrong button. This works as a subtractor. It looks pretty much the same, except slightly different, but it has the same circuitry. Anyway, that's the end of my talk. I, I wasn't actually expecting anyone to listen to this. Well, I was, but I didn't know who it could be, because like I said, they were either coding, so they can't listen, or they would be on that table with her, so they can't listen. What program is that that you're showing? And your question, um, if there, if there's questions, then say, then you can say it on that mic. <laughs> I just wanted to know what the uh, what the program is that you're using. I haven't seen it before. Um, it's called Digital Logic Sim, and this person in this series. Um, I don't have internet. But anyways, you can get to, you can search Digital Logic Sim on itch.io and then download it. Except there's much more material that he talks about. I could give another talk about this, like about how memorization in the and the other circuits, the on watch, the SR watch, the DS watch, the data watch, the register, seven segment display, all gate, any gate, to A B C D E F and G, seven segment driver, double, B C D, display, fancy driver. And that only covers three of the four episodes because the, I don't like the fourth episode as much as the other ones. So for now, that's it. Woo!